A reaction mechanism is a series of elementary steps that explain how a reaction takes place. An elementary step is a step that happens exactly the way it's written. So for example, this mechanism proposes that the first thing that happens is an A reacts with a B and makes C and D as products. Then once we make that D, D then reacts in the second step with E to make B plus C. The first step, experimentally, is the slow step. There's always one step in a mechanism that is called the rate determining step. That's the step that limits how fast the entire reaction takes place. Just like when you shop at a store, chances are the rate determining step is waiting in line. The time it takes to wait in line controls how long it takes you to get out of that store. Every other step, step is fast compared to that rate determining step. So from that mechanism we can figure out the overall reaction, what the predicted rate law is for that mechanism, and then we can also identify what type of chemical each chemical happens to be. The first problem, figuring out the overall reaction, just means add together the steps. So step one plus step two is going to give us the overall. There might be eight steps in a mechanism. Doesn't matter how many steps, you just add together each step. And when we do that, we can cancel out some things, like chemical B can cancel chemical B. Chemical D cancels chemical D. And what we're left with is the overall reaction, A plus E makes 2C. Next we were asked for the predicted rate law. The predicted rate law is always based on the rate determining step. So in this case, the slowest step is step number one. We're going to write the rate law for step number one using the same form we saw before for the rate law. Rate is equal to a constant, K, times the reactant, A. But this time, because we have the experimental evidence that step one is slow, that means the coefficient is equal to the exponent. So chemical A would be raised to the first power in this rate law, and chemical B, even though we canceled it out when we calculated the overall mechanism, the overall reaction rather, the coefficient is still a one in that rate determining step. So this would be the predicted rate law for this mechanism. That means we could go in the lab and we could test that mechanism to see if the rate law really is a to the first power times b to the first power. The last part is identifying each chemical as a reactant or a product or an intermediate or a catalyst. Reactants and products are easy because you already know that anything in the overall reaction on the left hand side must be considered a reactant. Any chemical that's on the right hand side of the overall reaction must be a product. The only thing new here is intermediates and catalysts. Those are the chemicals that got crossed out when we calculated the overall reaction, in this case B and D. What distinguishes an intermediate from a catalyst is where they were when you crossed them out. A catalyst is something that the person carrying out the experiment has to put into the reaction mixture. So a catalyst has to be a reactant first, and then it is produced in a later step so some later time it will be a product second. And that in this example, B fits the definition of a catalyst. It was used up in step number one, but then it's regenerated in step number two. A catalyst is able to be used again and again and again because it's regenerated in that later step. So this chemical B that was a product in step number two can then go ahead and be a reactant again in another mechanism. 
So chemical B is a catalyst. Chemical D fits the definition of an intermediate because chemical D was a product first. And that makes it an intermediate. It's a product first and then later on it would be a reactant. Notice we did not put chemical D into this reaction mixture. Chemical D was made by the chemicals A and B reacting. So chemical D was produced in this first step and then it was consumed in the second step. At the end of this mechanism there's no more D left to be used again. If another series of these reactions take place more D will be made but it's always going to be made by the chemicals themselves. So chemical D is a reactant chemical B was a catalyst.